Welcome to a video on determining limits using the special limits that we just discussed in the previous video. So my recommendation is if you haven't watched the video entitled The Squeeze Theorem and Special Limits, you might want to before viewing this video where we discuss these three special limits. This video will go over several examples using these first two special limits to determine other limits. So let's take a look at these limits here. The limit as x approaches 0 of sine 3x divided by x. It looks very similar to this special limit here, except now the angle is 3x instead of just x. If we manipulate this, then we can use this special limit to determine this limit. If we multiply the numerator and denominator by 3, we would have the limit as x approaches 0 of 3 sine 3x divided by 3x. Since as x approaches 0, 3x also approaches 0, it does fit the form of this special limit. And we can rewrite this as 3 times the limit as x approaches 0 of sine 3x divided by 3x. So this limit is equal to 1. Therefore, we can draw the conclusion that this entire limit is equal to 3 times 1, which is equal to 3. Let's go and take a look at this graphically. Let's type in our function sine 3x divided by x. We're approaching 0, so let's let our x interval go from negative 2 to 2. We think our limit is equal to 3, so let's let the y interval go from negative 1 to 4. Let's go ahead and graph this. And it's pretty easy to see now that as x approaches 0 from the right and the left, the function value is approaching positive 3, which graphically verifies what we found using the special limit. Let's take a look at another one. Let's change tangent x into the quotient of sine x divided by cosine x. So this would be the same as the limit as x approaches 0 of 2 sine x divided by x times cosine x. Again, this is disguised as one of these special limits. Notice we have sine x divided by x here. So let's rewrite this as the limit as x approaches 0 of 2 over cosine x times sine x divided by x. Now I could rewrite this as a product of two different limits, but let's go ahead and just find the limits in this form. As x approaches 0, cosine x approaches 1. So we would have 2 times, now we have the special limit of sine x divided by x, which we know now is equal to 1, so 2 times 1 would give us a limit of 2. Again, let's verify it graphically. We'll graph the original function. Press graph. And again, you can see as we approach 0 from the left and the right, we do approach a function value of 2. Next, we have the limit as x approaches 0 of sine squared x divided by x. Again, looks very similar to what we have here, except now we have sine squared x. Remember that sine squared x is the same as sine x times sine x. All this is divided by x. So again, we see that special form, let's say, here. So let's go ahead and rewrite this one more time. This is the same as the limit as x approaches 0 of sine x times sine x divided by x. Again, I could rewrite this as a product of two different limits, but let's leave it in this form. The limit of sine x as x approaches 0, well, that's 0. And then the limit of sine x divided by x, of course, is equal to 1. We know that by now. So our limit is equal to 0. And graphically, this verifies our limit is equal to 0, as we see here. 
Okay, on this next one, notice we have secant x. Let's go ahead and rewrite this as 1 over cosine x. So we'd have x in the numerator and then divided by cosine x in the denominator. As x approaches pi, the numerator approaches pi. And as cosine x approaches pi, it's going to approach the value of negative 1, so our limit is equal to negative pi. So notice in this limit, we didn't have to use one of these special limits. We could have just performed direct substitution. But a lot of times, we have to convert it to sine and cosine to recognize one of these two special limits. I think we have time for one more. So notice in this last problem, we have several secant functions. So to recognize if we can utilize these special limits, let's convert the secant x's into 1 over cosine x. Now what we'll do here is multiply both the numerator and denominator by cosine x so we can eliminate the fractions. We have cosine x over 1 in both the numerator and denominator. Let's see what happens when we do this. Here we'd have 1 minus cosine x. And in the denominator, we would have just x. And this does fit our special limit. So we know this is equal to 0. So notice how in this problem, converting to cosines was very helpful, where in the other problem, it wasn't necessary, but it also didn't hurt. I hope you found these explanations helpful. Thank you for watching and have a good day.